everyone, it is Marilyn Aloria and welcome to Who Can It Be Now. Today I'm inviting you into a channel session that I did. A very big channel session for me only because of the information that came through a bit in it as well as what happened surrounding it. I want to explain to you before we go into it about how I channel. There's different levels of my channeling. I am a semi-trans channeler. So basically what that means is semi-conscious is I am conscious, I am in communication with them. And sometimes I move myself out of the way and they just speak or other times like you're going to hear on this channel session, most of the times I'm in communication with them, which is more of like a relay type of channel session where I'm having a conversation with my guides. And I wanted you to experience this because there's a lot of myths out there about what channeling is or how you should experience channeling. And luckily, luckily for me, my guides when I started channeling with them, I didn't really get caught up in, oh, I should, my voice should be changing or this should be happening. I kind of just allowed myself to be with my guides and I allowed them to teach me how to channel with them and how to communicate with them. So you will hear me say, they said, they said, they said, that's how I channel. So what happens is I go into a session with them and I will communicate with them as if they're sitting there with me and I will ask them questions and then I'll relay what they're saying by saying, they said, they said, they said. Sometimes what I do, though, is I move myself out of the way and I just give the information that they're giving me. My voice doesn't change. I don't speak in a, a different accent. The only thing you'll may notice is there's a, a more of a calmness to my voice. There's more of like there's not that much intonation of high and low or a lot of emotional energy. And we all know that I have a very Italian energy, which is very could be very for me um, could be very emotional and uh could be high, low, and different intonations. I hope I didn't insult a bunch of Italians out there, but I'm Italian, and I could say it's my Brooklyn Italian side. So um, going to, that's, I just wanted to give you that. I really wanted to show you this for a few reasons. One, I wanted to, you to experience a channel session that maybe is different than what you think channeling is. Number two, it goes into some really great information about um, the earth and other types of things. And number three is... I want to get more of this out there. They're encouraging me. I have thousands, I don't know how many of my channel sessions because I record them all the time. I've been recording them pretty much since I've started over 17 years ago. I don't think I have the first few because they were on cassette. Um, that's how long ago it was. <laughs> they were on cassette and they were very hard to hear. And in the beginning, I didn't have a microphone. So sometimes I don't have a microphone anymore with these, but because our equipment is so much better these days, it does pick up the sounds. Um, you may hear me say through it, that's my stomach, that's my stomach. The reason why I do that now is because many times the recording will pick up a sound or a voice and it'll be like, hello, or it'll hit, feel, sound like, you know, and what I recognized was sometimes my stomach is growling. So I've learned to be able to distinguish it so that if it picks up a voice, we know that it's definitely not a voice and it's not me. So I am semi-conscious, like I said. And what that means also is that I'm conscious during it. I don't give over my power. My guides don't completely take over. But what it also means is I don't remember a lot of what they say after. It's very rare that I remember it, which is why I record it. And I like to go back to it sometimes. I don't always go back to them and listen to them. When I did this channel session, it was during a very um, intense period of my life. It was a few days after... I lost Micah and it might have even been a week after. And I had this experience with time, which I shared with you in a podcast, the time travel podcast. And my life was um, just doing this magical multidimensional dance where I was feeling very peaceful with where I was at, even though I was grieving heavily. So I felt the information that came through this really helped me shift to another vibration and to learn why I was going through what I was going through and to help me through the grief. So I wanted to also share this with you because of that reason as well, to show you how channel sessions can really assist you during times when you're feeling very um, maybe depressed or upset or sad. And they could also assist you when you're doing exciting things and taking risks. I also want you to see how they give me business advice and how they'll um, give me business advice sometimes when I'm sleeping and then bring it back around in a channel session so I understand more what I need to do and how to do it.
Now, my guides will give me marketing advice or tell me what to focus on in my business. And you'll hear in this meditation that they tell me to just focus on next level living. Because for a while, I've been struggling with all these other programs that I have that I know are really good that could really help people like Soul Finder Academy or all the other one of classes that I have, or I have an entire library of programs in membership for your soul. And my um, energy has been a little bit uh, fragmented because I'm like, yeah, I'm just focused on next level living. That's my live class right now. That's the one that I love. That's my program. And, but I have all these other programs that are so good and so helpful for people. And how do I get that out there? And you're going to hear the advice they give me on what I need to do. And that's what your guides can do for you. It's very practical advice that you need to have. So you'll notice like it's more of a conversation in good portion of it, especially in the beginning as I'm just taking their information in and I'm just relaying it. So again, I share this with all of you because I want you to see that there's different levels of channeling. And the reason why there's different levels of channeling, it's because how we decide to work with our guides. And if you're looking for some type of perfection or to be like some, someone else, you may be missing an opportunity to really talk to your guides in your own way. And the other reason why I channel in a specific way, especially in the beginning, you'll notice, is I'm filling in the recording, all the claircognizant information that's coming in. So you'll hear at one point, I'll say, they're showing me a glass, but it's a claircognizant message and it has so much more depth to it. So I'll go into explaining what the glass is. Now, Part of the reason I do that is because it's very hard with claircognizance because it's a download of information to get it out in a linear fashion. I know that there's uh, pieces of it that I have to get on the recording so that I understand why they're showing me glass. If I just said they're showing me glass and I didn't explain what that was about, it wouldn't make sense when I listen, if I listen to it a year from now. I also believe that a lot of these channel sessions are being recorded for a bigger reason. And it, I know I'm meant to go back to them and produce a lot of them and get them out there. And that's what they talk about in this recording as well. So I'm explaining to you how I work because I read very well for myself. And I really, I always want to teach people how to read for themselves. And so this is why I'm giving this to you. And what's interesting now is I'm recording this intro for you guys I think like three weeks after this, not even three weeks after this recording, it's about a week or 10 days. And already some of it has come to fruition. And I'm not going to share what that is just yet because I'm very um, private with certain energetic things. So when I'm still in process with certain energetic things, I don't always speak them out loud because I'm still working with the energy and um molding the energy or working with the, I don't want to say molding the energy, working with the energy. So, but listening to this right now, as I'm leaving this intro for you guys, so that I can explain what's going on. So you could really get a feel for it. Um, I'm like, wow, that already happened. That happened. This is wow. This is great. So I can see the clarity. And that's why I recommend to my students that study with me to record their sessions. And I feel like this is going to be helpful for a lot of you. Some of you are going to be like poo pooing it and that's totally fine. But there's going to be a majority of you that are like, wow, it's that clear. It's like having a conversation. I can do this. And I'm hoping that it turns on the light inside of you where you're like, that's not just my imagination. And I've shared this many, many times. When I first started channeling, I said to my guides, is this my imagination? And they said, we're giving you great advice. Who cares? And that was the license to just keep going. And I can't tell you, like I said, I've been channeling for almost 18 years now, the amount of advice that they give me, it's so profound, so incredible, so amazing. And when the, the, the times that I have gone back to recordings, they'll say, you know, go back to, I'll pick up a recorder that has like tons of files on it. And they'll say, go to file number three, recording number seven. And I'll just go to that one. Like there's a hundred on there and I'll go to that specific one. And it'll be like from a year ago and it'll be exactly what I need in the moment. And it'll also show me that things that weren't even on my radar came true. So I really suggest that you keep a recording. You can do automatic writing. That's fine. I do better with speaking. Um, either way, it's great to keep a recording because you think you're just making it up in the moment. And then you can go back later on and there's the evidence like, oh my goodness, this did happen. Okay. 
So I think you will enjoy it. And you'll hear me at the very end go, holy mackerel, that was an hour. Because that's what happens when you go into channeling space. Time does not. We have no concept of time. So a lot of times when you're um, channeling, you need to give it space so that you can really go in deep and allow the information to come through. Many times when I'm channeling, if I only have 30 minutes, then the information is very short and at the surface, but it, it can go deep too. But this was a session where I just allowed myself the time and allowed myself to go in and just allowed to happen what needed to happen. And I was quite surprised when I came out of it, like that it was an hour later. I hope you enjoy this and um, just know that there's different types of channeling out there. There's even a little bit different types of channeling with me when I'm doing readings with someone or if I'm reading a group or if I'm teaching my group through um, my guides and my guides coming through me. There's all these different ways that it can happen and you get to choose how you want to work with your guides. One of the most important thing is when you're working with others and even when you're working with yourself, you have to learn how to move yourself out of the way so the information can come through you. So you may look, listen to this and go like, you weren't really out of the way, but I was to receive the information. So I was asking about life experiences or um, what I wanted to know about my life, but I was willing to receive whatever they had to say in whatever form they said it in, however they said it or whatever, you know, whatever was going to be said. So I allow that to come through. I don't get attached to a response. And when you can let go of being attached to a response, more information will just flow to you and flow through you. Enjoy it. Have fun. I'm sure I'll be doing more. If you're interested in learning more about how I work, the program to look at is marilynaloria.com forward slash next. It's my next level living program. It's where we dive even deeper into this work and even in a deeper way that this channel session that I'm sharing with you is, is not as deep as we go. So if you're interested in that, go to marilynaloria.com forward slash next. Or you can email us at care at marilynaloria.com. Thank you so much. Uh, you're going to hear a little music and it'll go into the session. Have a great day or night whenever you're listening to this. They said they'd rather I rely on myself and the directions they take me in. But they understand that I need physical support right now. But it's not going to be for long. It'll probably be till October. They said to continue to do what I'm doing because there's information in all of it. But something's going to kick in inside of me that is better than any therapist I'll ever find. And that's my higher self. It's more than that, they said. It's your divine connection to this new God that you're creating, this relationship. It's that actual pure light. If you're living in connection with that at all times, anything that's disturbing will dissolve in your energy. And we don't mean that you won't have experiences. What we mean is that it will go a lot quicker. You will recognize it, see it, get conscious to it, dissolve it. It's faster than you even do it now. It's hard to explain what I'm, they're saying it too. It's hard to explain what they're giving me as an experience, as a clear cognizant experience, what they're saying. They're not saying it's easy peasy. It's not what they're saying. I don't know how to describe what they're showing me and what they're feeling. But it's almost as if something comes into my field and, I, and the way that I see this new God, which I need to paint. And it's a melding of the two. It's a melding of the pure God with me. So it would probably be a blue with a whitish and yellow. And then there's diamonds in it. There's like these gems in there that are very pure and significant, but also are not perfect. And that's your relationship with God. It's not supposed to be perfect. And so what they're trying to show me is that when you have this pure relationship, and right now God shows up as a square for me, this colored square. And it's more of a, um, it's not a square where it's a box. It's a dimensional square. Like when you see on TV shows, all these doorways behind, like it just leads into all these doorways, like you would see on the Twilight Zone or something. And it's probably why the black hole, I have to explore that. And so you walk through these doorways, but it's, it's not even like you're walking through doorways where you're going, it is and it isn't. So let me explain it. Like uh, the thing that Anna Maria said to me was one door closes, another one opens, but the hallways are a bitch, which I totally understood. And there's no hallways with this. If the hallways, the hallways are um, 
very short. They're shorter than, than what I'm experiencing. And each, each doorway is a dimension of consciousness where you shift and shift and shift and shift to a higher level of consciousness. And this is the work they want me to get out. This is why I have to go back to all my channel sessions and I have to get this work out. This is who can it be now? This is the next level of my work. And what they said to me last night while I was sleeping is they said, as I was falling asleep or whatever it was during the night, they said it's the focus is only next level living. It's only next level living. Because I keep getting into my head like I got to sell this class, I got to sell that class because I have all these amazing classes. And what they're showing me is next level living, it, you can have access to all this material. That's part of it. Because you do have great classes, but it's only next level living. Yes, you can have a down sell to SFA, but it's only next level living. That is your only focus. If people want to purchase coaching with Next Level Living, that's a different story. And then they show me all the doorways to walk through. They said, but you have to be ready to get your work out there in the way that it's getting out there. Venus can heal. And she wants to heal because it's a new relationship that we're forging the two of us. It's quite beautiful how we're getting into each other's heart. And she's the dog I need right now. She's very easy. She goes with me places. She does her own thing. She's independent. She's not needy. Yet she's there for stability and love. And we both love each other very much. It's just a very interesting experience, the rebonding of her, because what I'd said yesterday was Micah came in the middle of us and just filled both our hearts. And he was such a big energy and such a big love and such a big, you know, just this incredible being that Venus and I got separated heart wise because just Michael was there for both of us. And now that he's left, Venus and I are discovering each other's hearts. So what you're inviting people into is a new way of being and a whole new way of being. And they're showing me glass because a long time ago I did a class where they built a soul vase and it was a glass vase where they filled it with things that resonate with their soul. And it was a representation of their soul that they could always look at. And for those that didn't want to do a vase, I had them do a mirror where they painted and did things on a mirror or put things on a mirror. And as they looked into the mirror, you could barely see your reflection because you would see reflected back your soul. So it's a soul reflection. And what I'm doing is carrying people to their soul through a new dimension, a new way of doing it, a new consciousness. And it doesn't have all, it's not laced with all the pain of the past. You actually go through, you go past it. And it's not the unicorn woo woo stuff that's out there that does, has you, I, I don't even know what spiritual bypassing means, but it's bypassing the emotions is what I understand, I think, because I don't get into mass conscious conversations. It's, it's not bypassing emotions. It's right going through your emotions, but that gets you greater clarity. That gets you greater alignment. That gets you closer to your, um, the dominion of your soul, being in your soul, being in, in the divine energy of your new God, what God is to you. And whether it's God, universe, whatever it is, it is this energy, this pure light, this pure love that wants to assist you every second and every nanosecond of the day. And then people have a belief that once you do that, you're not on the earth plane anymore. And they said, that's not true. There's a new whole new wave happening here. And people have to do this because they have to embody this to live on this earth plane in order to elevate it. And when Elon Musk says, oh, it's not going to be here any longer and whatever, I can't, I'm going to butcher that conversation. So I'm not even going to go there. They said it's not necessarily in the physical form he's talking about. There is a whole other consciousness that may show up. And then Earth, the way we see it, we may not see it that way because the illusion of Earth will shift and change. They said there's so much more here that we can't understand in our consciousness, in our brains. And if we try to make sense of it, that's when we, we mess ourselves up and we fall down the stairs and we fall into the rabbit holes. The, you can't do it that way. You can't try to figure it out from what you know today. You have to try to figure it out 
but you have to be with it. It's not even trying to figure out to be with the information from the future, from the future perspective, the future knowledge, the future wisdom that you don't yet know. And that's how you have to embrace information of today. You have to come from the future to embrace the information of today. And think about how you have to do that because you have to do that not knowing anything, releasing. And then being with the wisdom, the knowledge, the experience. And if people are wondering what this means to them, it's a whole new approach of doing this life. And they said, I won't see the shift in this physical lifetime for me. I'll see the work. I'll see shifts, but the mass consciousness shift that this may create is a ripple effect. It's kind of how some work lives on. It's like I experience Wayne Dyer's work as, as having an elevation to it. It doesn't, it's not the consciousness that you met it with when he was alive. There's a different consciousness to it. So there's certain work out there that you can read the work of a lot of philosophers and you can read their work from the consciousness of today, and that has elevated the work, the understanding of the work, the understanding of the writing. So if we read it in like, you know, just uh, thinking of Tao Ching, or um, Tao, like I'm not saying these names right, but if you looked at it from the 1950s, it would have been a different understanding than what it was today. So that work has a, an evolution in it. And that's the work that I'm creating and has an evolution in it. Think about doing your life that way, what that means. And that everything you see is patterns, is numbers, is vibration, is energy. And the, the earth shifting and changing with the consciousness means that a tree may no longer look like a tree. You may see it in its purest form. And that's why the earth may not exist the way the earth exists, not because it blows up or it's destructed, it's because the consciousness elevates to such a place that the understanding and the vision of a tree is now in its purest form, which may just be moving patterns, numbers, vibrations. People have to embrace a new way of thinking and being. So they want to move out of this because I believe I'm going to take that portion and put it on the podcast and they want to talk to me. So this is why I can't work with any one particular therapist. Only why I can do a few sessions here and there. Because doing the sessions is helping me to break through the paradigms that are no longer serving me. Excuse me, that's my stomach. That's my stomach. So really the podcast they want me to do, besides the Sal story, and that brings me into the conversation of everything else, of the consciousness and dimensions and what happens when people pass, it's more sharing my work. So, and they said, there's something that I'm holding that I have to suffer through this before, because that brings in the clarity of wisdom. So you have to shift that dynamic. So if you do a ritual of releasing things, that's one of the things you have to release is shifting the dynamic that you have to suffer in order to get into great wisdom. That's the belief system out there. And that's the belief system that has to dissolve and dissolve it in the purest light of God. And we understand when you share this with others, if you share this particular meditation with others, this particular channel session, that God is just a term Again, that boxes them into consciousness. It doesn't matter what you call it. Again, it's very difficult to speak with you guys about words because your words have so much, so many barriers around them. You can't find the pure essence of words. And that's the other thing that's going to shift with the earth. You're not going to need words. It's going to be a whole different language. It's going to be a language of vibration, of numbers, of symbols, of energy, of touch. Bodies may even dissolve. How do you bring this into practicality? 
you absorb this information, you let it be in your system, in your being, and then you do the world from this knowledge, you'll have a much different experience. They're reminding me of something when I lived in Fairfax and the time that I hit the wall with the car when all this was opening up for me and I don't have to hit walls anymore. The spirit just said to me, you don't need any more difficult times. You're done with them. So please step away from people who recite that as the only way through. So let us help you. So yesterday I saw the magical owl, or the one or two, and I saw it. So practicalities, let's get into practicalities for a second. <sighs> That's why Venus is the perfect dog right now. She's so good. She's just sleeping. She's so special. I'm going to discover a real specialness about her. That got overshadowed because Emmy was in the picture with Venus. And then Venus and I only had a couple of months together, a few months together by ourselves, and we bonded. We even bonded towards Emmy's ending because I couldn't take the pain of losing Emmy. And then Mike had bounced in, took over <laughs> with his love and his nature. And then he made way for us again. What a giving dog. What a love. But there's something Venus has for me that's so special. And I'm willing to receive it. So, um, they're showing me healing, um, and that's it. Thank you guys. Wow, that was so powerful. Thank you. Oh my goodness, that was an hour. Holy mackerel.